In this video we'll talk about function notation. Let's consider a function f given by the equation y equals 9x minus 5. Oh, equation, function, is that the same? Well, not quite. A function could be given by the equation, but it could be given by something else. could be given by word description, a graph, some sort of diagram, or just a set of ordered pairs of numbers. On the other hand, equation doesn't have to give a function. For example, equation x plus y square equals 2 doesn't give us a function. How come? Just because if x is, for example, 1, then we have two values for y. Could be either 1 or negative 1. Therefore, there are two pairs of numbers 1 and 1 and 1 and negative 1 that would satisfy this equation. This obviously contradicts the definition of being a function. So not every equation gives you a function and not every function is given by the equation. However, we can easily recognize that this equation represents a line. We know it very well. We graphed this many times. So this equation could be considered as a function and we could name it as f or any other letter. Let's recall again what a function is. A function is a rule by which we assign a unique y value for every given x value. So if we have an input x, we can obtain a unique y value. And that's what's happening in this equation. This would not be true in this blue equation above. OK, so we could have some equations that would represent certain functions. but quite often would like to see what is this relation, what is this function, how does it look like. That's why we graph it and that's why quite often we identify a function with its result, which is actually the graph of the function. The graph of the function is the set of all ordered pairs x and y that will satisfy the rule in this case, that will satisfy this equation. So to get a graph, we need to take a couple values of x and find out the corresponding values of y. Let's see. If we choose x equals 1, then we use the equation, plug in instead of x, 1, and the corresponding y will be 9 times 1 minus 5, which is 4. That tells us that if the input is 1, the output is 4. Therefore, the ordered pair, 1, 4, will belong to the graph of function f. That could be plotted in a system of coordinates and since we already know this type of equations, it's a linear equation, it's enough to have two points, connect those two points and see the graph of the function. Let's check another point. If x equals 0, we plug into the formula. The corresponding y is 9 times 0 minus 5, which gives us negative 5. Similarly as before, that means that the point 0, negative 5 belongs to the graph of the function f. We could sketch gently a diagram just to have a better idea how this function looks like. So 1, 4, just approximately, let's say this is 1, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 4 would be somewhere here. And 0, negative 5, oh, that's quite low. 1, 2, 3, 4 negative 5 is here, so 0, negative 5 will be somewhere here, therefore the line is very steep, the overall function looks somehow like this. But this is something that we know. We know very well how to graph a line. What I wanted to point it out here is that when you calculate different y's, we always need to write that this particular y is the value for this particular x. So our rule is taking an x and assigning to it a particular y. If we have a few y's, which y are we talking about? This is the y that is assigned to the x equals 1. This is the y that is assigned to the x equals 0. 
we could write ordered pairs of numbers like this or there is another notation we could say that we are assigning not any y but the y that will be called f of x this f of x tells us that we are assigning a value to the particular x so for example the negative 5 could be expressed as f of 0 since negative 5 is assigned to the input 0 so instead of saying y equals negative 5 and that's the y that is assigned to the 0 we can say that f of 0 is equal negative 5 and this notation gives us a lot more information it gives us the y and the x at the same time x is your 0 y is your negative 5 the f of 0 similarly instead of saying my y4 was assigned to the x equal 1 we can say f of 1 is equal to 4 and that carries all the information that we need how the 1 and 4 are connected so we use this notation for a better clarity f of 1 equals 4 remember we read this f of 1 not f times 1 so there is no multiplication between f and a bracket and whatever's in the bracket that's our input and the value of the function at this input is our regular y value that is assigned to the one so we're saying that the function f assigns the value y equals 4 to the input x equals 1 similarly this statement tells us that the value negative 5 is assigned to the input 0 we can restate this in other words we can say that function f attains or assumes the value negative 5 at 0 we could also say that 0 is mapped another word is mapped by the function f onto negative 5 for example imagine that this is a set of all input points particularly this point is 0 and that is a set of all the output points particularly let this point be negative 5 then the function f is mapping the 0 onto negative 5 so that's our f function and similarly point 1 it was mapped on point 4 so we could represent this map by using arrows like this so as you see the words like function or mapping they are actually the same and function notation is used just to carry a little bit more information we know exactly which y is assigned to which x and we can refer to it with better clarity for example if I want to refer to a y that was assigned to a point 2 by our function f I can just say I'm thinking of a point f of 2 even though I'm not sure how much is f of 2 I know that I'm talking about the value of the function f at the point 2 so since f of x carries more information than just y we're going to use f of x to denote the y value that is assigned to a particular x so again instead of y we're going to write f of x and f is just the name of a function we can name it as f or some other letter f is the most popular but you could also use g or h or any other letter so that will be a name of a function just this letter f x is the input of the function and f of x is the output or a function value this really means the same as previously the y value here the function is defined by our example 9x minus 5 so this is a defining rule it doesn't have to be equation it can be a diagram could be a set of ordered pairs of numbers could be even a word description something that will clearly define how do we find the y value or f of x value when we have the input x given so x by itself it's our input 
and f of x or y, that's our output. So f of x means y. As I mentioned before, the function could be named differently. The most popular letters that we use for various functions are f, g, h. But if we think about trigonometry, we're using abbreviations for sine, cosine, tangent. That's nothing else but just names of functions. So we could use even more than one letter, if that's easier to describe which function we have in mind. OK, so if we want to summarize, why do we use function notation rather than just y? First of all, is because it carries more information we know which x is this particular y assigned to. Secondly, imagine that we work with a few equations, not just one equation. And each equation will be y equals something. Well, how do we know which y are we referring to? Which function are we referring to? That's why it's also good to use different letters to name different functions. And then we can say, let's talk about f of x, or let's talk about g of x or let's talk about g of 2. So function notation is introduced not to make our life harder, so students need to study more, but actually to make our communication easier. Let's try some examples. Refer to the given graph to find what f of 3 is. Well, this is our graph. We assume that 1 square represents 1 unit. What's f of 3? Well, this is the y value that is assigned to the input 3. The input is on the x-axis, so 3 is here, and the graph gives us information what y value is assigned to the 3. So we move 3 towards the graph and then read it from the y-axis. Actually, now we should call it f of x-axis. So the corresponding y here it's actually 4. Therefore, f of 3 is equal to 4. Now, our question could be posed in different way. For example, this time we want to find x value such that f of x is 2. Hmm, f of x is 2, not x. And remember, f of x is the same as y. So y is equal to 2. OK, so I start with y value on y-axis, on vertical axis. And then I look at this level 2 until I meet the graph and then project this point perpendicularly onto the x-axis to find the corresponding x. The corresponding x here is also 4. So the x value such that f of x is 2 is 4. We can say that f of 4 is equal to 2. And here we have a word problem that will allow us to understand better function notation. To print t-shirts, there is a $100 setup fee plus a $12 charge per t-shirt. Let x represent the number of t-shirts printed and f of x represent the total charge. Write a linear function that models this situation. So, since f of x represents the total charge, that's like your y value, so we write f of x equals, and we need to figure out the formula that will allow us to calculate the total charge for printing x t-shirts. Well, if we print x t-shirts and each of them cost $12, then we'll have to pay 12 times the number of t-shirts, 12 times x. However, that's not all because even if we don't print any t-shirts, just to place the order for setup fee, we'll have to pay $100. So on the top of whatever the cost of printing X t-shirts be, we need to pay $100. That's the fixed fee. And as you see, we obtain a nice linear function, where f of x is the total charge, and x by itself is the number of printed t-shirts. Number of t-shirts. Okay, 
The next question is, find f of 125 and interpret your answer in the context of this problem. So, since we already know what f of x is, we just need to evaluate this formula for f of 125. That means instead of x, this is our input x, 125, we replace x with 125 and add 100 and then use your calculator and we end up with $1,600. Okay, interpret your answer in the context of the problem. What is this $1,600? Well, that's how much money we need to pay if we print 125 shirts. So we can write in a full sentence, f of 125 represents the total charge for printing 125 t-shirts and this charge is $1600. For what value of x we can say that f of x is a thousand? Interpret your answer in the context of this problem. So what do they want from us now? Well, we want to solve equation when f of x is a thousand. But what's f of x? Well, f of x is 12x plus 100. So we write 12x plus 100, that's what f of x is, must be equal a thousand. And we can solve for x, because question is for what kind of x. Okay, subtract 100, so it's 900, divide by 12, we end up with 75. Good. But what does 75 stands for? What is it? Interpret your answer. Well, since the f of x was a thousand and f of x represents the cost, we want to know for how many t-shirts we'll pay exactly a thousand dollars. How many t-shirts we can print for a thousand dollars. So we can say for one thousand dollar we can print 75 t-shirts.